A very good evening. Welcome to State of Business on Art Television. I'm Ashing Sunny Virasinghe. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. President Maitri Palasirisena claims that he briefed the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on the reasons behind the reintroduction of the death penalty. AXA and SOFA agreements will be beneficial for Sri Lanka, says Finance Minister Mangala Samaravira. News in detail. President Maitri Palasirisena today said that he briefed the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on the reasons behind the reintroduction of the death penalty. Addressing an event in Polonaru, the president said he had clarified these matters during a telephone conversation with UN Secretary General yesterday. However, the international community is deeply alarmed by the decision and some were warning that the move will affect the confidence among the foreign investors and travellers. Thus, the UK government issuing a statement mentioned that the restoration of the death penalty would damage Sri Lanka's international standing and its reputation as a tourist hub and growing centre for business. Furthermore, the statement also emphasised that the implementation of the death penalty will hinder UK's cooperation on law enforcement issues, including on counter-terrorism. Meanwhile, the High Commission of Canada to Sri Lanka also showed disapproval on President Maitri Palasirisena's decision on death penalty, stating that the recommencement of executions could gain negative global attention and would obstruct Sri Lanka's confidence as a peaceful and welcoming destination for travellers and investment. Adding to that, the global business tycoon, founder of the Virgin Group, Richard Branson, publicly expressed his discontentment on the proposed death penalty, claiming that if the President does not withdraw his decision, the international community comprising governments and businesses alike will react accordingly. Meanwhile, when the international community expressed their displeasure on the restoration of the death penalty, Finance Minister Mangala Samaravira shared his personal opinion on the much controversial subject. This current subject which is much talked about everywhere, but I have already made my personal opinion extremely clear. And I believe that is also the opinion of the government. We are totally against the reintroduction of the death penalty. Moreover, Finance Minister Mangal Samaravira stresses that the Acquisition and Cross Services Agreement, also known as AXA, and the Status of Forces Agreement, also known as SOFA, were signed in 2007 and 1997 respectively, and what is happening at present is a renewal of those agreements. Addressing a media briefing yesterday, Minister Samaravira also highlighted that America is the single biggest trading partner of the country, which accounts for exports over 3,000 million USD out of a total of 11,666 million USD. And the circulation of fake news against America could hinder the massive development projects. These are very, very, very beneficial to the country. I stand by these agreements and I think it is also very unfair that senior officials like the former foreign secretary and the former ambassador to the USA has been attacked mercilessly. He was merely carrying out the wishes of the government. I don't think he should be held responsible. In fact, I will take full responsibility for recommending this project even though in 2007, it was signed by Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha. We discussed it while I was minister, but the actual the signing of the agreement took place after I had been removed as foreign minister. Minister Samaravira also added that the Millennium Challenge Corporation is a new agreement. It will be signed as soon as possible. At the same time, he also dismissed the allegations by the opposition over an MCC office inside the temple trees. What nonsense! There's no headquarters of the Millennium Challenge Corporation. The Millennium Challenge Corporation is in Washington, D.C. In fact, I visited that office in January. I have been there. There is no such office yet. But if we sign this agreement, they will, of course, have a local office somewhere. But to say that it is based in the Prime Minister's office is an utter lie. Finance Minister Mangal Samarvira also spoke about his statement to import Chinese cigarettes and said that what he highlighted was the necessity of increasing the revenue by regularizing the import of cigarettes. As a very sensitive government, we will always take the protest uh, into account. But again, I must tell you that 
it is not a in fact what i am trying to do is to get some income or revenue from what is already happening in a very large scale actually you don't have to go very far just go into the fort and go to many of these small shops and you find that you could buy chinese cigarettes not only chinese but any other international cigarettes all these are smuggled so my argument is why can't we increase our revenue by regularizing the import of cigarettes but on the other hand if others thinks it's wrong i certainly will not go ahead with it there's no issue the board of investment of sri lanka recently signed a supplementary agreement with the south korean investor jnd venture private limited to produce packaging items for export Thus, representing the BOI, Chairman of the Board, Mangale Appa, signed the agreement with the JND Company Directors, Seong Eung Lee and Seong Ok Jang. Under this agreement, the company will be manufacturing packaging and will display items made of printed and unprinted value-added die-cut, corrugated cartons. They will also manufacture garment accessories such as stickers and body cards for export at their existing plant, which is situated in Katuwa, Valaburalas, Gamua. Company's director Seong Yoong Lee mentioned that he strongly hopes to back the process of strengthening Sri Lanka's manufacturing sector by implementing some of the economic strategies that were used in South Korea and to help Sri Lanka's wider economic ecosystem in the process. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. A trade union collective affiliated to the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation and Ceylon Petroleum Storage Terminals Limited warned a trade union action from Monday unless the government commences the repairing work of the remaining part of the crude oil unloading pipeline from Colombo Port to Kolonava Terminal. They also warned that they will initially block the oil supply to the Ceylon Electricity Board. The media briefing was organized by Sri Lanka Freedom Party trade unions and was attended by all trade unions. Trade unions claim that out of the five unloading pipelines, only two were functioning. In 2015, the repairing of one of the pipelines was commenced with using local expertise and labor. Trade unions claim that the repairing works have been stopped leaving just 140 meters to be attended due to political advantages. Trade unions also claim that if there is a leak in the tube, it will pose a major threat to the people who are staying over the Kolonnav area and its ramifications and will be worse than the Meethotamulla tragedy. As a result of Sri Lanka's representation at the Thai Fix 2019, which was held in Bangkok earlier this month, a high-profile Thai tourism delegation arrived in Sri Lanka yesterday to expedite tourism recovery of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau had organized a welcome ceremony in Colombo yesterday. Thus, this is a sequel to a recent meeting between Minister of Tourism Development, Wildlife and Christian Religious Affairs, John Amarathunga and Governor of the Tourism Authority of Thailand, Yuthasak Supason. Thailand tourism, which has faced similar experiences similar to the recent terrorist bombings in Sri Lanka, has agreed to share expertise with regard to crisis management and recovery strategies. The Thai delegation, led by the Deputy Governor of the Tourism Association of Thailand, Chattan Kunjara Na Ayudhya, will be in the country till 1st of July 2019. Accordingly, during the event, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau Kishu Gomez mentioned that an MOU was signed between Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau and the Tourism Authority of Thailand to promote bilateral tourism between the two countries. And he also appreciated Thailand's cooperation over restoring normalcy in Sri Lanka tourism. The seniors who came here representing the tourism authority did promise to us that they will do their utmost to help us recover. So we are very, very grateful to them. And something must be said here. The first delegation coming into the country after the incident that happened on the 21st of April was from Thailand. We had a Buddhist delegation led by a few senior monks uh, together with again a large number of devotees and uh, we had some events in Colombo and uh, they went 
around the country as well. So we had some uh, media engagements uh, while they were here and that uh, helped us to take uh, some strong messages to the rest of the world to say that Sri Lanka is safe. So we take this opportunity to thank uh, the Thailand government, their tourism authority and uh, the media who came over here. We have about 40 media personnel coming over to the country to cover these events and to experience Sri Lanka. And when they go back, uh, I'm sure they will uh, disseminate a lot of positive messages. Sri Lanka's rupee opened weak at 176.65 over 80 rupees against the US dollar in the spot market today, while bond yields edged up and stocks opened 0.07 percent higher. The rupee closed at 176.5 over 70 against the greenback yesterday. On Monday, Sri Lanka raised 2 billion US dollars through an international sovereign bond for budgetary support with over three times over subscription. Central Bank also announced that foreign holdings in Sri Lankan rupee bonds grew by 2.3 billion rupees to 147.1 billion rupees for the week ended June 26. Here, Dimanta Matthew, the head of research at First Capital Brokers, giving a summary of the stocks of the week. The market continued to be volatile this week despite the selective buying interest that was there. However, on a week on week basis, if we take the market ended negative, um, it's the lack of retail participation. The dull sentiment, the market continued with the foreign participation also broadly uh, onto the selling side. Turnover levels remained weak, with the average being uh, below the 500 million mark, with the exception of uh, Tuesday, where we saw a couple of block trades taking place in Harish Chandra and We'll be back after a short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 27.15 points to close at 5,372.28 and the S&P SL20 gained 18.8 points to close at 2,496.56. The turnover was 300 million rupees with over 9.8 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all the news for today. Join us tomorrow on Biz Roundup. Until then, take care. Good night.